Yet one small discovery, or one simple flap of a butterfly's wings, can create total change in our lives. We interrupt this program to bring you breaking news from Merlin TV. Merlin TV, the groundbreaking internet news channel, bringing you truth, life-changing facts, life-changing discoveries, the opportunity to enhance your life and other people's too. Merlin, we all need a little magic in our lives. Welcome to Merlin TV. I'm Peter Baker, and you're about to make both a frightening, yet also an interesting discovery. Your money, your savings, are becoming less valuable almost daily. Not only is inflation rising faster than interest rates, but so much extra money is being printed for so-called quantitative easing. It's gradually becoming worth less than the paper it's printed on. In fact, it has been predicted that nobody will accept paper money in another 10 years. It will all be digital money. So if you are hiding any under the bed, then you might as well burn it. Most economists are predicting that the future of currency will be solely digital and bullion. In fact, 90% of all current transactions are already digital, a fact that very few people know. Against this rather uncertain backdrop, a new kind of digital currency is emerging, possibly the currency of the future, crypto coins. Now, most people have heard about bitcoins recently in the media, with Virgin Galactic, for example, now accepting them as payment towards space flights. And you must have heard the story of the poor fellow who threw away his hard drive with several millions of dollars worth on it, and people scouring the rubbish dumps with metal detectors looking for the digital codes. However, very few people truly realize the impact that bitcoins, Litecoins and the many other crypto coins will really have on our financial futures. We go now to a special report from our colleagues at ATV. Have you ever heard of a Bitcoin? It's the first decentralized electronic currency not controlled by a single organization or government. Check this out. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the first decentralized digital currency. Bitcoins are digital coins you can send through the internet. Compared to other alternatives, Bitcoins have a number of advantages. Bitcoins are transferred directly from person to person via the net, without going through a bank or clearinghouse. This means that the fees are much lower, you can use them in every country, your account cannot be frozen, and there are no prerequisites or arbitrary limits. Believe it or not, this is a currency now being used by more than 100,000 people all over the world who are trading thousands of dollars worth of Bitcoin every day. And just imagine, a currency with no middleman, no bank, and no credit card companies. So to talk about this alternative currency and what other economic policy changes could avert the full financial collapse, which my next guest says could happen as early as next month. Right now I'm joined by Max Kaiser, host of the Kaiser Report from our New York studio. Thank you so much for joining me, Max. Hi, Abby. It's uh, great to be with you. Awesome. So let's talk about Bitcoin. I see that you've been talking about it quite a bit lately. I find it really fascinating, Max. Give us a sense. I mean, how efficient is this really? Is it really able to fix the economic problems we face? Well, efficient is a good word. Uh, first of all, it's up 200 percent this year. So the Dow Jones is hitting an all time new low against Bitcoin. Uh, this is a currency that people are starting to gravitate to as a store of value, uh, realizing that the other currencies out there, like the dollar, the yen, and the euro, are just fiat currencies run by central banks who have the ability to print trillions and trillions in an attempt to debase their currency in what's called the currency war. Whereas with Bitcoin, there is a limited supply. It is a storehouse of value. It is cryptologically protected, so it gives users the benefit of making anonymous transactions. And yes, it is very efficient. You can send money anywhere in the world for a fraction of 1% 
uh, which is a lot cheaper than anyone else offers. So it's going to challenge the business models of the big banks, the so-called too big to fail banks. And let me add something else, Abby, is that this rise in Bitcoin shows you the real effects of the money printing that's going on at the Federal Reserve Bank. You know, Ben Bernanke in his testimony before Congress will say, well, we don't see any inflation, even though his CPI number that they use to gauge inflation is uh, not really representative of a true basket of goods that the average American might experience. The average American is experiencing 8 to 10 percent inflation, and they're wondering why would the Federal Reserve lie like that? So there's a lot of problems with what the Federal Reserve is saying, and this is drawing attention to Bitcoin, which is now a $400 million market, and it has room to become 1, 2, 5, 10 percent of the global forex market. So that Bitcoin price, which last year was at $4, which is currently trading almost at $50, if it captures 10% of the global market, you could see Bitcoins trading for $100,000 of Bitcoin, a million dollars of Bitcoin. Let That's me ask the potential. You this, though. Let me ask you this. I mean, is there any, and I love the anonymity part of the Bitcoin. I think it really can get a lot of widespread appeal. But I mean, as it gains more traction, what kind of efforts could we see or should we expect to see rather from, from banking industry and from you know, these bank lobbying efforts to really block this? I mean, is it possible for them to really stifle the growth of this? I don't think it is possible to stifle the growth, uh, aside from just shutting off the internet completely. But even in that case, you could store your Bitcoin offline in a, in a drive, in a, in a thumb drive or something like that. So there really is no way to attack Bitcoin. And for this reason, it's gaining a lot of adherence. And just to point out, again, uh, when you hear the words coming out of Ben Bernanke's mouth, uh, in terms of there's no inflation out there. Well, the Bitcoin price tells you that there is really inflation around the world as we see the price of Bitcoin, uh, gold, silver, oil are all starting to ratchet higher. So Bernanke is clearly lying. And, and this is what's driving attention to something like Bitcoin, which is a true limited supply currency that has genuine attributes of a currency that is attracting now hundreds of millions and soon to be billions of dollars in interest. It makes so much sense, Max. It's hard for, for someone like me who's grown up in this debt-based currency on a total crash course. I mean, it's a completely unsustainable model, which you have actually come out and said, you know, this is going to fail soon. I mean, we're not too far away from, from a total financial collapse here with this unsustainability. Why are you so sure that this is going to happen so soon? Well, the, the Dow Jones, for example, hitting a new high. Well, the amount of debt backing the Dow Jones has hit a new high. So this is a, a rally based on margin or debt. Uh, the U.S. debt is at all-time high. The global debt is at all-time high. The global derivatives markets are at all-time high. $600 trillion in derivatives around the world. So if you look at the global economy as a system, uh, because it has long since left the place of being tied to anything relating to supply and demand of tangible assets like gold, we're now really in a systems analysis to look at this global economy, you realize that the stress and the strain of the system by adding these hundreds of trillions of dollars worth of derivatives creates these episodes of systemic collapse. And we've had now four or five years of this rally. We've had now uh, a period where people are, have grown complacent. And generally, that's when you see the wheels start to pop off. And that's when you see uh, markets go through a bit of a tumble. You know, they say markets climb up a staircase and fall down an elevator shaft. So this <laughs> elevator shaft is about to open up, I think, pretty quickly here, and we're going to see another crash, and then people will say, oh, we never saw it coming, and they'll bail out the banks again, and the whole thing is repeated. But of course, we hear these, these buzzwords, Max, from the corporate media, sequestration, fiscal cliff. I mean, all these things are kind of preventing us from seeing the bigger picture, uh, what you're talking about right now. Um, and as you just said, you know, the Dow Jones reaching record, record high. Uh, corporate America, CEOs making record profits while workers are making even lower wages. Uh, you just wrote a really great article that talks about how at this point, corporate America could easily be paying $100 an hour for minimum wage. Um, talk Talk about the concept of tying the minimum wage to the money supply. Well, this is something I've been trying to communicate to labor for a number of years. They keep trying to tie their wages to inflation, but the inflation number is, is cooked, it's bogus, it understates inflation by a huge factor. They need to look at money supply and say, we want wages tied to money supply. That's how bankers are paid. 
But bankers are paid based on the growth in money supply. The government increases money supply by trillions of dollars, and the bankers pay themselves as a percentage of the growth in money supply. So as long as there's a Federal Reserve increasing money supply, workers should demand equal participation in such a focaccia economy by tying their wages to money supply. And if they did this over the past 20 or 30 years, minimum wage would be $100 an hour or $150 an hour. And you look at a, a company like Apple Computer, uh, they've got $130, $140 billion in cash sitting there in the balance sheet. They could easily pay their workers $100 an hour and still be vastly profitable. So these companies have record amounts of cash. They have no idea what to do with all that cash. <laughs> they end up recycling it into the bond market, creating a bond bubble. Why not just pay people? Why not just pay workers a, a wage that's tied to money supply growth? That's what I've been talking about. And I also sent you a story, Abby, about the uh, Eric Holder's comments uh, talking about banks and HSBC, basically reemphasizing the point that these banks are now completely above the law. He believes that to prosecute banks would jeopardize the global economy. He's creating a two-tier justice system. Banks don't have to adhere to any laws. Everyone else has to somehow comply with the law. This is very problematic and troubling, Abby. So it's elaborate more. We have about 30 seconds left, but talk really quickly about what you're talking about, what scandal you're talking about. Well, HSBC, a big bank in the UK, was caught laundering close to $400 billion in Mexican drug cartel money and laundering money for terrorists. Their defense was, you can't prosecute us because if you did, you would jeopardize the global economy. They signed <laughs> off on this in the UK, and Eric Holder has just signed off on this. He has also said now that that's correct. And this was also came out with Lanny Brower, who's assistant district attorney in Washington, D.C., who also came out during a documentary and reiterated the point that we can't prosecute banksters because if we did, we'd jeopardize the economy. So uh, this is a remarkable turn of events. It essentially legalizes financial terrorism, uh, financial, uh, what Paul Moore, a uh, whistleblower in, in the U.K. for HBOS, he, he said that these guys in the banking system are responsible now for a financial holocaust. Totally absurd million people. logic. Uh, too big to fail, also too big for trial. Max Kaiser from the Kaiser Report. Awesome to have you on. Hope to have you on again soon. Sure, Abby. The big question is, how and where do you get on the Bitcoin and general crypto coin bandwagon and get yourself into the crypto coin rush? One man seems to have the answer. Peter Aldred, head of the Merlin Corporation, has written a fascinating and compelling book all about crypto coins and how to create wealth with them. This easy to read and understand book written in very plain English will tell you everything you need to know about crypto coins and more importantly, how to get your hands on some before they all get mined and snapped up. And for those of you who would like to get on the bandwagon but don't want to mine your own coins and don't know how to trade on the financial markets, the Merlin Corporation has developed a unique gifting program. It works under the great philosophy of pay it forward and put simply, it shows you how to work as a collective and that by gifting just one coin, you may well receive up to five coins back. That sounds like something I want to be a part of. I am Peter Baker and this was a special bulletin from Merlin TV. This was a special broadcast brought to you by Merlin TV. To find out how you can profit from cryptocurrency, don't waste a moment and go to the MerlinCorporation.com. That's www.themerlincorporation.com.